Hey, it is I, Josie Lewis. Last week, I ran a little Instagram poll to which I got thousands of responses. And the poll was about copying and influence and being influenced by other artists uh, or influencing other artists on Instagram. And um, what the results of the poll showed was that more than half of the people that responded had been copied one way or the other, whether in social media or in real life. And I found that fascinating. And some of the responses were like, listen, nothing's new. There's nothing really new. Everything is coming from somewhere. So what are you going to do? Right? And some responses were like, it's mine. It was my original idea. It was a hundred percent me. Don't take it. It's my precious. Don't look at it. Don't even think about it. So the first thing I want to do is introduce some fancy pants artist terms. The first one is appropriation. Appropriation is when somebody very consciously takes a different expression and incorporates it into their art. Picasso did this when he took a newspaper and glued it onto his canvas which nobody had ever done or thought of before. Now, of course, collage is old hat, but for Picasso, it was a new thing. Nobody had done that before. Another example of that is Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol took newspaper images of celebrities and then he made them into screen prints with various colors. Very, very famous work. You've probably seen his Marilyn Monroe and his Elvis, among others. Another example of this is an artist named Roy Lichtenstein. Roy Lichtenstein would paint copy of cartoons and he would paint them so faithfully in large format that he would copy the little dots that were formed from the printing process. He would paint them by hand in large format and he was of course appropriating not only the cartoon but also the printing process. Another much more controversial and recent example is an artist named Richard Prince. Richard Prince is well known for appropriating and borrowing and possibly stealing things. He had an exhibition a couple years ago where he took screenshots of Instagram accounts, not his own, and printed them off exactly as they were and sold them for $100,000. True story. This is real. This is what happens in the art world, guys. Another artistic term is art that's derivative. Derivative is usually not a compliment. If an artist's work is derivative, it means it's being influenced or possibly copying a much stronger artist's work. If something's derivative, it's lacking its own originality and is likely to be not very strong on its own because it's so referential of somebody else's work. You know, punch in fluid art into YouTube and you'll find a bajillion videos about it. I actually think that this trend was started by my friend Arthur Brothers, who has just absolutely terrific work and you should check him out on Instagram and his website. He started doing this style back in 2015 before it was like this big thing. He doesn't claim to start have started it, but he hadn't seen it anywhere. I certainly hadn't seen it anywhere before he started doing it and then it kind of blew up and now it's everywhere. Okay, another term worth mentioning is plagiarism. Plagiarism is just, you know, stealing, lying, those things that our mama told us not to do. It's when you take someone else's work and it's you, you pretend like it's yours. Maybe it's as direct as you take a screenshot and then you post it and you're like, Oh yeah, I made this. Isn't it nice? I heard a story, a girl who made a funny, cute little mermaid cake and her mermaid cake went viral and a bunch of people reposted it, sometimes with attribution, but sometimes not. And they pretended it was theirs, even to the point of in comments when someone would say, oh my gosh, you should be a professional cake decorator. They'd say things like, oh, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that hard because all you had to do is take a screenshot and then lie. So you can flat out copy something and call it yours. Or another example was, this happened to a lot of photographers I heard from. Somebody would take their photograph and then throw a filter on it and then call it their photograph. 
sorry guys, no, it is not your photograph. And it's extremely insulting to the originator of that photograph to put a random filter on it or crop it or whatever. There is, I will add here, a time honored practice of going to a masterwork and copying it as faithfully as you can. This is usually called a study and at no point does someone making a study claim it to be their own work. They're not saying, oh, look at my new idea. I just made this up just in my spare time. There are many a tale of a huge department store out and out stealing an artist's work and then mass producing it and then selling it for $12.99. This is heartbreaking and so demoralizing to have some chain department store be like, oh, I, we like this, we're putting it on a plate. And it is just such a bummer for an artist who has put all this blood, sweat, and tears into their work and then gets it stolen for profit. Like this company is now gonna make money on their visual idea and like suing a big store like that, you may or may not have the money or the time or the resources or the emotional capacity to go into that. I mean, it really sucks. I recently came across a, a really interesting case of plagiarism in the art world. A well-known artist, Lena Iris Vick, Victor sued Kendrick Lamar because in one of Kendrick Lamar's latest videos, her work seems to strongly influence some of the visual choices that they made in the video. I think she's pretty justified in suing them. They didn't ask her, they didn't consult her, they did not pay her. Okay, so this concludes part one of my vlog on copying and influence in the art world. Please leave your comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts about uh, all these gnarly topics and stay tuned for my next episode. Thanks, bye.